Now that we have set up our SP tutorial project and imported our DEM, we are ready to move on. In this video, we will do three things. First, we will learn how to view the metadata and geographic coordinate system of our initial DEM. Two, we will change our map view into a projected coordinate system. And three, we will project our original DEM into the new projected coordinate system by exporting it to the Geo database. When beginning any new mapping project in ArcGIS Pro, it is essential that you first understand what coordinate system your data might be using, and second, you must decide on a projected coordinate system that will most accurately display your data. Step 1. To find out more about the geospatial metadata that is stored within our DEM Geo TIFF, let's navigate to the catalog pane and right-click the DEM and select Properties. Here we can find loads of useful information about our data, including its source, resolution, extent, and spatial reference. When we open up the Spatial Reference drop-down menu, we find that our DEM is situated on our map using the Geographic Coordinate System, North American 1983. Geographic Coordinate Systems, or GCS, are used to define locations on a spherical model of the surface of the Earth. A GCS defines a grid of imaginary lines known as latitude and longitude. These are used to give a unique XY coordinate position of any location on Earth. A GCS requires a reference datum for this grid. The equator is typically the reference line for 0 degrees latitude, and the prime meridian is the reference line for 0 degrees longitude. Coordinates are expressed in an angular unit from these datums. The most common geographic coordinate systems used in North America are the World Geodetic System 1984, known in short as WGS84, and the North American Datum of 1983, known in short as NAD83. One issue that we deal with when making any sort of map is that the Earth is a three-dimensional oblate spheroid, but maps are two-dimensional and flat. So depending on how you project a spherical Earth into two dimensions, you will have some sort of distortion. To accurately draw data that preserves equal areas, angles, or distances with minimal distortion, we need a projected coordinate system that is suited to our study area. Unlike geographical coordinate systems that use angular units of measure, projected coordinate systems are planar systems that use linear units of measure, such as meters or feet. The transverse Mercator projection is commonly used. It is calculated using the universal transverse Mercator grid, which divides the world into 60 north-south zones that each covers a strip 6 degrees wide in longitude. Note that in Arizona, our study area lies within the UTM zone 12. Using this projected coordinate system will minimize distortion in our study area, which will allow for a more accurate map. It should be noted that there are many different mathematical ways of projecting a sphere into two dimensions. Depending where and at what scale you are trying to map, you should research a projected coordinate system that will least distort your data. For example, our UTM Zone 12 projection works great for mapping in Arizona, but it would not be ideal for mapping in Antarctica or the Eastern Hemisphere for that matter. For more information on geographic coordinate systems and projected coordinate systems, I strongly recommend you check out the help pages on Esri's website. Esri is the developing software company for ArcGIS Pro. Deciding on a projected coordinate system is a critical step before creating any new data products or beginning to map. By ensuring that our initial DEM and map view are within the same projected coordinate system, we will avoid many common issues when using basic tools and functions, because all of our data will be using the same horizontal units of measure. Let's begin with step two, changing our map view to our UTM Zone 12 projected coordinate system. To do this, navigate to Map under the Contents pane, right-click and select Properties. Then click on Coordinate Systems, 
And here you will see just how many different GCS and PCS exist. Let's navigate to Projected Coordinate Systems, then scroll down to UTM. Then we select NAD 1983 and scroll down until we find the NAD 1983 Zone 12N. One useful tip is to right-click this PCS and click Add to Favorites. This will make it quicker to find later on instead of sifting through all the drop-down menus. Click OK. The N after the zone number refers to this projection being suitable for mapping in the Northern Hemisphere, in which Arizona lies. There are other UTM projections that are better suited for mapping in the Southern Hemisphere, and the zone numbers would have the suffix of S for South. We see now that our map view has changed from a view of the whole world to a narrower North-South projected UTM zone. We have successfully flattened our GCS in the map view. Step three, now we must do the same projection to our initial DEM so that it matches our map view projected coordinate system. We also want to export our new projected DEM into our project geodatabase for safekeeping. As a small aside, making folder connections in the catalog pane is a convenient way to get data into your project. However, if the connected folder or data source is ever moved deleted, or otherwise altered, you risk losing data for your project, and you will run into issues when trying to export your project elsewhere. I was taught that your geodatabase is akin to a backpack, as it stores all of your binders and books when you are on the go. Therefore, it is crucial that we ensure our foundational data products are safely stored within the geodatabase, I will go into more detail about the geodatabase in later videos when we discuss feature datasets and feature classes. Since we know that our initial DEM is located using the NAD 1983 geographic coordinate system, we must now project it into the NAD 83 UTM Zone 12N projected coordinate system. This will keep it consistent with our map view. To do this, right-click the DEM in the table of contents, click Data, then Export Raster. This will open up a pane on the right-hand side of the screen. First, underneath the Output Raster dataset, click the folder icon to specify where the new projected DEM will go. This will open up a file directory. We must make sure that we are exporting it to our SP Tutorial Geo database. Now we want to give the new DEM a more meaningful name. I start with DEM10, indicating to me that it is a digital elevation model with an approximate 10 meter per pixel resolution, which is evident by the cell size, followed by underscore NAD1983, which tells me the original geographic coordinate system of the DEM, then followed by underscore 12N, indicating that I had used the UTM Zone 12N projection when exporting the raster. Click Save. Next, under Coordinate System, click on the globe icon. We must specify we want NAD 1983 UTM Zone 12N projected coordinate system. Remember, if you right-click any GCS or PCS in this directory, you can click Add to Favorites, which allows you to find them quicker. We will leave all other fields as they are under the General tab. However, there was one remaining crucial step before exporting. Navigate to the Settings tab at the top of the pane. Under the Resample drop-down menu, you will see three different methods, Nearest Neighbor, Bilinear, and Cubic. Nearest Neighbor will not change the values of the resampled projected cells. Therefore, the resulting projection will make the data appear blocky. Cubic convolution is another method that determines a new value of the cell based on fitting a smooth curve through 16 nearest input cell centers. It is appropriate for elevation data, although sometimes it results in the output raster containing elevation values that are outside the range of the original input. Bilinear interpolation, like the cubic method, determines a new value of the cell based on a weighted distance average of the nearest four input cell centers. 
So though it causes some smoothing of the original data, it is less dramatic than the cubic convolution. In my experience, I have always had the best results with bilinear resampling method when projecting digital elevation models into a new projected coordinate system. Cubic will yield okay results, but does too much smoothing of the original data. Nearest neighbor should be avoided at all costs when projecting elevation data. Select the bilinear resample method, then click export. Note how the new projected DEM populates automatically in the table of contents. This is how we know that the export was successful. When we toggle between the two DEMs in the contents pane by checking or unchecking the boxes, we see that the new projected DEM looks similar and almost indistinguishable from the initial DEM. This is a good sign as it means that the projection and resampling of the original dataset did not distort or overly smooth our initial dataset. Recall that we specified our new projected DEM to be exported into our Project Geo database, or backpack. But when we look at our catalog pane on the right, we cannot see the new DEM stored underneath the SP Tutorial Geo database. It is important to note that sometimes when working in the catalog pane, we need to refresh the geo database and or folder connections whenever changes are made. Navigate to the SP Tutorial geo database in the catalog pane, right click and then hit refresh. Now we see our newly projected DEM populate underneath the geo database. This means now that our newly projected DEM is safely stored in the backpack of our project and will be safe from potential data loss in the future. Speaking of data loss, always remember to click Save Project consistently in the uppermost left part of the screen. In my experience, ArcGIS Pro is very stable and is good at recovering lost data if the program ever does crash, but it is good practice to always click save project whenever you complete a new task in building your workspace. In the next video, I will show you how to make hillshade base maps from our newly projected digital elevation model.